Hello, my friends. It's uh, Rich Whitehouse, or Dick Blackshack, or uh, Old Dickles, or whatever you prefer. I prefer to be called Dickles. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I've uh, been pretty hard at work on a whole bunch of stuff this month. Unfortunately, I have had to sidetrack myself for a couple of different uh, prospective contracts. I'm trying to lock those down. I haven't actually signed either of my main prospects uh, yet. And I've got a third one that I'm supposed to be talking to some people about this week in case the uh, the one with a certain company uh, does not work out. I really can't say anything about any of that stuff right now. Everything's under NDA and, uh, you know, project names, even involved company names in, in these cases are off limits. So um, anyway, it's been a bit harder to get around to working on stuff. And I had planned to spend some more time uh, doing some online platform integration for uh, Big Team and Big Instinct this month. But I ended up more going down the rabbit hole of just reverse engineering the hell out of Killer Instinct and Killer Instinct 2. And uncovering all kinds of different function and data structures and stuff like that. And uh, in the near future, I'm going to be uh, doing some of the stuff like what Maximilian Dude requested. Making an option to have uh, easier specials where it's more forgiving on... If you go like left to right and hit kick, uh, or uh, right to left and hit kick instead of down, down right, down, down left kick, for Jago's one kick, for example. Um, and that stuff should be accessible to me pretty pretty easily at this point. Um, I haven't dealt with that exact code yet, but I've dealt with pretty much all the code around it. I think at this point I've got the, the big pieces charted out, and it's just a matter of drilling down into the little pieces and finding them for a given functionality when I need to. And so uh, what I'm about to show you here is uh, some of the fruits of that labor, which is this training script I've made. And this is going to let people get way more in depth than they've ever been able to with, uh, uh, you know, figuring out exact frame timings and distances and things like that, because you'll actually be able to see the collision shapes, which uh, I don't believe anybody's ever dug into, uh, much less showed, showed how to visualize or understood properly. And so I'll show you here, the first option is just show collision shapes. And so the red shapes are kind of the, the meat, the meat boxes, so that's where you get hurt. And then the green boxes are potential attack areas. And the green boxes actually do get um, collided against each other. And there's various logics for deciding wounds or foot people get hurt when that happens. But, um, also, I used to uh, box turns around uh, for a frame or an impact, just to denote that it didn't hit something. Or see when something hits, if the uh, other object is in the state where it doesn't have to register, it's got some left for the other way for it to be. We'll still see that box turn around to let you know how uh, you are intersecting there. And uh, you'll notice, of course, we have infinite time and infinite health turned on right now. Infinite health has two options. You can put it into, uh, you know, past and danger mode, or just keep it full. And you can also force uh, either player to do anything. So uh, I've got the AI controlling this player. Make it just stand here. And uh, there's uh, quite a few other modes. Uh, AI mode, crouch mode, jump, back, punch, kick. So like, back mode will just make them go back all the time and they will bother to block the low attacks and stuff like that. And funny enough, you can actually, um, even if you're not AI, you can put yourself in AI mode. So, <laughs> so now the uh, computer is just trying to kill the Customly blocking player. Let's see how that works out for you. <laughs> yeah, you can do chip damage, of course, but if somebody decides to turn in this game, it can be a real pain in the ass. So there's not too many moves that are useful for certain company. Somebody's quick enough on reacting to overheads and such. <laughs> you basically get this kind of scenario. Enough entertainment, inter entertaining myself there. Um, oops. Okay. Turn the AI back off. Just kind of restand. 
And uh, another option is to uh, preserve hits when they happen. So let's turn off sh hit shapes and just turn on preserve shapes. And what that, what that does is uh, you get a hit, it kind of persists and shows you what the exact intersection is between the two objects. It can be pretty useful if you want to uh, study things, which can go hand in hand with we now have a slow motion timing modes, which isn't traditional slow motion. It's actually um, uh, running audio and things at the proper rate and just changing the video timing. So you don't get like slow down audio or anything, but just like literally running the game in slow motion. Okay, so there's that. And you can make it even more extreme if you want to, but let's go with modern here. And now a couple more uh, coup de gras of this functionality. We have Oh, uh, pad hit shapes. You notice it just kind of like it adds extra padding here because on the uh, unlike Orchid's rooftop and Cinder's rooftop and the other full 3D stages, you notice that collisions are actually very exact. They're operating with extreme uh, high high precision coordinates and everything, and so the intersections that you see visualized are the intersections you get within you know uh, within a pixel basically. Whereas on some of the uh, pre-rendered or planar, planar scroll locked stages, it actually seems to be having some precision issues in the impact. So you will see, uh, if you look very, very quickly, you can see a discrepancy between uh, the distance between characters where you'll get a hit by maybe like, I like to count in character pixels because I think that's the most reasonable way of gauging um, where you are in terms of character pistol links, character pixel lengths, sorry you'll get uh, discrepancies on those other stages and these full 3D stages, and these full 3D stages actually turn out to be the more accurate ones. Um, but anyway, if you would like to have the visualized collision compensated for that, there's this option to pad the hit shapes by about the amount that you'll see um, uh, potential like error, error collisions on those uh, locked scrolling stages. And um, let's see here, you can also prevent hits entirely. It can be useful if you're really trying to exactly gauge the distance before you get a hit or you don't get a hit like this. And what can be extra useful there is if you enable this option. And so this option has a few modes. You can show uh, Euclidean distances, x-axis distances, and y-axis dis distances. And x-axis, x-axis, sorry is the most uh, useful one if you're just con concerned about like width, for example. And this is showing you basically the furthest points uh, on a given shape from the origin or the position of the player in local space here. And so uh, this, this means that basically like this shape on either side is a maximum of 31 units away from this origin point. This means that there's 82.152 units between the two character origin points. And as we move away, you'll see that fluctuates. And of course, all these nice visualizations do scale with the uh, <laughs> the actual players, which is just a fun little feature. And um, so you see here, you can kind of math out like the actual the exact distance that you need to be for some of these hits to occur based on especially like the size of uh, of the attack box or the attack shape and again you can uh, make that a little easier if you want to switch into super slow-mo mode because that gives you much more per frame uh, visualization accuracy there and uh, another oops, another uh, very nice option to go in, in conjunction with all this is showing the states. And so uh, this stuff shows you, you know, the actual game frame in the upper left there, also the world coordinates of both players, and you notice the Y on both players is zero there, but if we do something to like, oops, it's maybe possible to actually hit us, hit each other. Yeah. And 
Take her soul away again. <laughs> so you notice when the camera rotates there, we start getting onto a non axial plane. That's when the other coordinates start changing. And uh, world coordinates are, are generally too useful because all the collision stuff happens in local space. And uh, as uh, we got mostly stun, stun meters here. And uh, action state flags show you uh, various things that each player is doing. Crouching action, hitting, hurting. And the player is just you know, performing hurt actions. <laughs> um, and we have you know, the current animation sequence as well as the frame within the sequence. And delta is the number of frames, game frames, which have elapsed since the. Um, since the uh, sequence changed, and so you can uh, use that as a reference. You'll we'll see, like, show up each time they get hurt, the shots enabled. You'll see that damage number, and those frames numbers are the first frame is you know 79 here. That is the frame delta of the player that was hurt, and six is the frame delta of the player that did the attacking. And so by using that information, you can see the exact frame upon which uh, the attack occurs. And mind you, that is not the animation frame, that is the game frame. So that is the exact number of game frames which it takes for that animation to become an attack, which can be also very useful if you're one of those people that uh, meticulously does frame timings to figure out you know, the most efficient, optimal ways to do things. And, in fighting games, and I know there are a lot of people like that, which is why <laughs> why I've made this functionality. And uh, this stuff isn't quite finished. I still plan to um, add like a, a mode to uh, you know show input histories and stuff like that. Pretty pretty standard fair stuff for fighting games. But I figured it would be useful as part of this script, so it'll just show you know your, in, your hip, imp, uh, history of inputs across the bottom of the screen. And. Uh, you know, I'll probably have a few more a few more ideas and then I'm going to be doing a tweaking script in addition to this training script which will have a lot of actual fixes and other uh, potential behavior things, stuff like that. So um yeah, let's make that back sort of fun thing is you can't put both people into uh, danger mode perpetually but also have um, still have them but it'll still allow ultra finishers so you, <laughs> you can practice your ultras to get them right that way. Forms keep working in those sequences, but uh, yeah, so there's all that. Okay, set things back to relative normal here, and uh, yeah, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna like I said, I'm gonna be working on uh, kind of that that tweak action script as well, which will uh, include like stuff like what uh, Maximilian Dude asked for and I'm sure tons of other things as as they come to mind. And uh, I know that people have asked for like silly trivial things like, oh hey, what about, you know, things that we often get in consumer packaged games that are effortless for them, like um, uh, a menu that you can, you know, see a move list for a given character. Um, and so that kind of stuff would be totally trivial for somebody else to implement in a script. Who isn't me? Uh, I could do it too, but it's just like, why spend time on it? So, uh, you know, there there is a big scripting channel in the Discord for anybody who does want to undertake that. I know my friend created it when uh, there was, you know, an influx of requests for silly stuff like that that anybody could do. 
And of course, everybody went silent after that. So <laughs> and nobody really seems to want to do the work, but it is. It's totally trivial to do. Anybody could do it. Just like have some very, very, very basic C program knowledge and you could do stuff like that. Um, but I mean, if I ever get to a point where I have surplus of time where I'm not working on uh, like more elaborate features that really only I could do, uh, like this really intense reverse engineering stuff that nobody else is working on, if I ever get you know, an actual surplus, I might hit some of those like pure cosmetic features. But um, for the time being, it just seems like kind of a bad use of my time. That's why I've been avoiding stuff like that. But um, in any case, uh, once all this uh, you know, tweaking script type stuff is done, um, I'm hoping to also kind of um, run the network platform stuff in parallel to that. And the hope is obviously once I launch on a real proper platform that people will start getting more online games going organically and things like that. And uh, I haven't heard about anybody using this thing for like an online tournament or anything, but that's also completely viable. And, um, you know, uh, it, it probably does, as, as far as I know, offers, uh, you know, a networking uh, multiplayer experience that uh, surpasses everything else out there, including even like the commercial code mystic stuff, uh, just by virtue of the fact that it can manage so many rollback frames and it can make things pretty seamless, even with really high ping times. Uh, like I've mentioned, I played like uh, uh, games with ping times in excess of 250 milliseconds in, in Europe, and I've still had a completely smooth experience where uh, occasionally, you know, you'll see that rollback happen, but it's like it's instantaneous, it's smooth, it doesn't hitch. And so um, I would like to see more people put the actual network play to the test and see how it works out for for a uh, you know broader demographic, because um, I'm sure this netcode will be useful in many emulators to come as well. So it, it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to make sure it's solid and maybe I can license that in the future as well. Who knows? Um, but it does largely depend on having the emulator be super efficient to begin with, so it's kind of like uh, comes as part of the package with this whole Dick Trainer thing and achieving here to and four here here to four unrealized speeds stuff like that. But anyway, uh, I think that demonstrates everything here. So I will see you folks later. Dickles out.